My name is Teresa, and I'm going to tell you a story of what happened to me when I passed away and I returned. And it's called a near-death experience. In 1990, I was being treated with um, some drugs for hormones, and I had a lot of heart complications with it. And what happened was um, I passed away as a result of that interaction of those drugs. I floated out of my body and I looked down and I saw myself. And I was confused because I didn't recognize myself at, at first. And I was kind of afraid then. But as I started floating above my body, I noticed I was in a tunnel and I started going towards a light. And that light was the most brilliant light multiplied thousands of times stronger than what the sun was. And I was being pulled towards that and I kept going and kept going and kept going. The closer I got, the more intense the feeling of love that was possessing me. It, it was pushing in on me. It was, it was almost suffocating me. It was so tight. And when I got to the light, the love was so incredible, the acceptance, the forgiveness. There was pure knowledge. I knew everything and, and I knew everything was going to be okay. And when I first got there, I was greeted by someone to my side and it was a man and he was dressed in a robe. And he showed me over to my side, there was a long table. And at this table were thousands and thousands of people on either side of the table talking and chatting and conversing and having a good time and laughing. And everyone was having a party-like atmosphere. And I remember when I looked at the table, instantly one person turned and looked straight at me and caught me in the eye, and it was my grandmother. And she said to me, she goes, you can't stay here, it's not your time yet. And I instantly said, I'm, no, I'm not leaving, I'm staying. I love it here. I'm, I'm accepted here for what I am. I'm forgiven for everything I had ever done. And I did not want to leave for any reason. Um, the next thing that I remember was looking over to another side and I noticed uh, a, a small table with just two people sitting there. And I, I didn't quite understand what was going on over there because the conversation wasn't the same as the big table. Um, the smaller table, it was almost like an argument was going on between these two people. And I asked the man that was with me, and, and when, you, when I say I asked, you don't talk like you're speaking, like I'm talking to you right now. You speak in a way of what I believe that we call telepathy. You know what the other person is saying, and, and you converse that way. And I asked him, I said, what is going on over here? And he told me, that's an angel uh, speaking with that man, trying to get him to stay here with us where we're at. And there was nothing more said about it, but in my heart, I felt like that man had committed and that angel was trying to get him to stay here with us. I, I can't say I understand the whole meaning of that, but, but that's what I felt was, was the situation. 
The next thing um, that happened to me was I asked to see the Christ, whom I address as the Christ, maybe your higher spirit, your guardian angel, whatever. But to me, it was the Son of God. And instantly, this love that I felt intensified millions of times over. And there was another man standing next to me, and I knew immediately it was Christ. And I was looking down at his feet, and, and I kept coming up higher and higher, and I was coming up to his face. And when I got to his face, I couldn't see any facial features. Um, it was all brilliant light. Um, and it didn't burn your eyes. It's not like staring at the sun where you can't look for very long and then you have to look away. This was a, a brilliant light that, that you could look at and you wanted to stay there. You were drawn to it. And I remember the love, the love, the forgiveness, the truth. Truth was known. Knowledge was known. Um, everything was going to be okay. That was the message at all times to me. Um, the Christ, when he arrived, immediately started what near-death experiencers call as a life review. And for me, how mine wor worked was, it was like a screen. And on the screen were pictures of people's faces. And these people were uh, the people that I had had interaction with throughout my entire lifetime. And whatever I had caused that person to feel as a result of my interaction with them, that's what I felt for, for a brief second, very intense. Whether it was we had a good interaction or we had a bad interaction, I felt that intensity. Uh, and then it kept rolling just as fast as could be, just, just lightning fast of people's faces. But yet I comprehended everything that was going on. Time has no meaning. Um, the time that I was there by earthly terms was four hours, but it seemed like I was there only a, a few seconds. But time has no meaning there. Uh, the next thing the Christ asked me, he said, what did you learn from seeing all of these faces? And I said to him that love was the best choice. And he said, you're right. And I saw how I had to be careful how I treated people. And um, I never, never will forget that part of my near-death experience. The next thing the Christ showed me was a pool of, of water, I'm sorry, more of a pond. And it was outside and there were trees around it and a single drop of water, like a raindrop, fell. And I could see the ripple effect of when the drop of water fell into the, to the pond. And he said, don't you see your actions are just like the ripple effect in that pond. Everything you do not only affects those people, but it affects those that ripple on and further out and further out and further out. It touches people's lives that, that I had no idea, uh, but it does. It has the ripple effect. Um, the Christ then told me that I would have to go back and I, I, of course, I didn't want to. I wanted to stay. Horribly, I wanted to stay. And he said, I want you to remember these three things. And what I was told was, number one, to have more love, which I've contemplated years now. Uh, since my near-death experience, exactly uh, what facets that could mean. 
The second one was not to be afraid of what I had left behind. And I'm, I'm not real proud of a lot of the choices I've made in my life. I've, I've made some bad choices. Uh, I've made some good ones. But I understood what he meant when he said that. And then the last thing was to enjoy life. And uh, life is short. And then we, we come into a different place. And another thing that I learned while I was there was not to fear death. There's no pain in death. There's no pain in dying. When you die, the pain is leaving. And that's why we run to it when it comes to us. We start running to that tunnel, to that light, to get to it because we want to be with that love and get away from the pain. And that's why there is no pain in death. And that's my experience. That's how I experienced it in uh, 1990. And uh, that's the end of my story.